I'm Natalie McCool and welcome to my podcast McCool and the Gang. This is a special series of episodes where I'll be chatting to female artist producers about music production. The reason for this special series is that earlier this year I was awarded an Arts Council grant to develop my own music production. As an artist I've always had a vision for my music and when it comes to the production it's something that I've always been heavily involved with and most recently I 100% recorded, produced and mixed two tracks from my recent album Memory Girl, something which I'm incredibly proud of. Now I've got the opportunity to really lean into that. As part of this podcast, I decided to speak to other female artists who also produce their own music to explore what inspires them and how they work. This episode, I'm hugely excited to welcome Lapsley, an artist originally hailing from Liverpool, now based in London. Lapsley signed to UK label XL when she was just 18 years old, after releasing a series of self-produced singles, which showcased her dynamic vocal and incredibly beautiful and nuanced music. Here's a pretty inspirational chat about reclaiming artistic identity, her long-awaited second album Through Water, and the importance of rest and recuperation. Here we go. I think you're a magnet, and I'm a magnet too. People just attract like magnets, like me and you. And when we... Yeah! Yeah, I've just been listening to uh, your latest album. Just the synth sounds are like swimming in like a nice hot soapy pool. So nice. <laughs> yeah, I love I love all the sounds and like all the just the soundscaping and sound design, I guess you'd call it. Yeah. Um so I know that you kind of got producing from like really young age, and I just thought like is was there one kind of personal thing that got you doing that into it or inspired you to do that I mean I think the way that I started producing was accidental because I didn't actually know how songs were made and so I did like my first EP on garage band just because that's that's all I that's all I had I had like one keyboard a garage band and like this little mic and I kind of thought that, like, naively, that um, all the singers that you hear, like, made everything and wrote everything themselves. Yeah. And that's just what everyone does. Yeah. And then it wasn't until, like, I started to get attention when I was, like, yeah, like, 16, 17, that they were, like, do you produce it? I was, like, what's producing? Like, yeah, yeah I'm, like, I made the tune. Like, everyone makes their tunes. And they're, like, no, that's not how it works they're like you have writers and producers and like there's usually loads of people to make a song mm. and I was like nah I just like just did it in my bedroom yeah so I kind of went from like me doing everything to then actually over the years having more people as part of the team and like now I work with an engineer who kind of like kind of like co-produces and co-writes with me but like I it just means that I'm not sitting at the sitting at the table and staring at the screen I can just mm. like want lot more and also it's like another brain to kind of like um relay ideas with but that is quite like a luxury um and he's like my best mate so yeah that just I think because when you spend so much time alone as like an independent artist like you know like you know like you just you can get quite lost like and yeah just having another person in the room I found really helpful to like be objective yeah um, but yeah, now I'd say like as a producer, like I actually spend less time like driving and sat at, at the laptop, but like more time like standing and like facing a wall and listening to it and being like, right, okay, we need to change like um like this plugin or like yeah, we need yeah. this. And I can I'm kind of like the DJ Khaled of the the <laughs> producer rather yeah. than the nerd because I'm actually quite slow technically um but like know what ideas I want to bring to the table so I, you know what I went from like I don't know whether it was the same with you but never I never co-wrote with anyone up until like five years ago or something and at the start I found it really horrific and weird but then I really enjoy it now like I actually love it I don't know maybe yeah I don't know why yeah <laughs> I'm just got used to it <laughs> 
yeah a certain person like for you to feel comfortable with for example like and, and I have boundaries like no one's ever like written a lyric for me like that's kind of my thing yeah but love when someone brings chords to the table or like yeah. production is but like I, I write for the people and like often they're like I've got the chords you bring the lyrics mm. yeah, so yeah yeah on the situation um but yeah I think it's cool because it like pushes you as an artist in in a direction like that you maybe wouldn't have considered mm. yeah definitely yeah I, I can say that for sure yeah I wondered like when you were speaking about um you know when you when you kind of got signed and people were like oh you know that's not how it works we have writers and producers and and other people that you can work with I, I wondered like was there anyone maybe trying to shift the control away from you then in that way um even if they're doing that unconsciously and whether that's whether you think that was to do with the fact that you're female yeah definitely mm. I was immediately put into sessions as soon as I signed mm. like went to LA and like I didn't feel like my voice was being heard in the room and it's I had to reclaim my identity as an artist through the second record mm. and put my foot down and only letting specific people into the room and just working with Joe mainly mm. who at the time was the in the in-house engineer at XL and now it's like yeah full-on like co-producer and co-writer on the record and for future stuff but yeah definitely um because you don't have the you don't have the confidence when you first start like to be able to defend your sound or your ability and also you're still working it out it takes a few years to have that confidence to be like this is my sound this is what I'm going to defend in order mm-hmm. to keep the identity of what my project is um so I think that was like a a faux pas on the half of the label yes. and now I work with young people and I write with them I make sure that like they do have that space to to say to me look I, I want you to step back or uh, you know yeah, yeah. I encourage them even if they're not writers to write and I want to hear their story so we can put them into the lyrics so they feel a sense of ownership in the song when because I had times when I didn't feel like I had control or ownership and we'd get to the end of the session and there was a song that I didn't feel was my story or represented me. And that's that's sad. Yeah. yeah. It's sad and as well, it's, it doesn't help anyone because then you're like, well, I'm not going to release it. And then it's just a wasted day and time on everyone's part. It's, it's a shame really, isn't it? Yeah, exactly. I don't know whether you've heard of a charity called Brighter Sound, the based in Manchester. Um, yeah yeah I do facilitation for them and that's a lot like that for young people like encouraging them to find their own voice and like you know what do you want to say (laughs) and so definitely yeah I identify with that a lot that's cool yeah I love working for them absolutely amazing Charlie um yeah you're so self-assured like it's so amazing to see (laughs) um takes going through the the shit I think what I realised is you don't always have to have the answer in order to call out what you know is the wrong answer. Yeah, sometimes you don't know what it is, but you know what you don't want. And yeah, I, I think a lot of the time when it's like that trope of like, oh, you're just, you know, you, you don't know what you're doing. You're just a young girl. And it, it's kind of like, well, no, I know what I know that that's not it. Like, don't just, you know, belittle me on that account. Yeah. Just, okay. you know. yeah. So... What kind of, um, like, non-musically, what's the stuff that inspires you? People. I'm such an extrovert and, like, I love going and see my friends and, like, I think my music is quite introverted, but me as a person is quite extroverted. And so, like, um, I'm constantly, like, listening to other people's stories and, like, I kind of create chaos in my life with my relationships <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> always like there's always something to inspire me um I listen to a lot of music and I love to go to like art galleries but and read and I love to read but I do think that the main thing in my life is like my yeah my friends and the relationships that I have yeah yeah because I am so interested in people <laughs> Yeah, me too. I like conversations. Like someone will say something and you're like, 
it'll just go in and then it'll come out, you know, five weeks later and there's some kind of song. Just love like yeah. the, the everyday conversations you have. There's such great lyrics sometimes. Oh, amazing. Yeah. I read, um, I've, I just like quickly read like a few interviews and um, I didn't know that you lived in Manchester. Yeah, I took a year out in Manchester. Yeah, that's because I lived in Chorlton for two years. I really like Manchester. I don't know. How did you find? Yeah. How, how did you find it? Um, I mean, I I wasn't very well after my first record, after like touring, and had to go. I just had to leave London and mm. basically took like a year off and lived in Manchester. So I associate Manchester with like this year of like getting of like reclaiming my youth and like going out and seeing friends, and doing effectively what everyone did when they went to uni, which mm. I think I kind of out on being like put like thrown straight into the industry at like 17 yeah and that was like recuperation and like learning about myself and I did move there for like a boy and stuff like that um but yeah I love being able to like walk around the city and like especially like the northern quarter and you know I, I remember seeing like Jade Bird there like one of her first shows was in like the northern quarter and there was like 30 of us um, and it was so special. Mm. And it was, like loads of examples of stuff like that where I've just like stumbled into like a gig and seen something all gone all gone the soup kitchen and like and also like being northern, like it just I just felt more um I was like, uh, yeah, I'm around my people. Do you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, yeah. Defo. Definitely, yeah. yeah. It's it's a bit different in London. London's like international city. Um, and southerners <laughs> yeah. yeah and I feel like sometimes you have common with like the international people than you do the southerners yeah <laughs> I know yeah I, I absolutely love Manchester same as you moved there for a boy and then <laughs> when that ended moved away again um yeah. but yeah where are you now I'm in Liverpool now oh nice yeah 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 by Sefton it's dead nice yeah, it's dead nice. <laughs> green, so green, yeah, it's amazing. Um, with your kind of music and the, the kind of soundscaping, I wondered like um, how much like real gear do you use in contrast to, you know, plugins of virtual instruments and yeah. Um, it was the first record was like mainly plugins. And I guess, like, the second record, like, I started to be more interested in, like, using proper hardware and synths. And it was, like, a Prophet and a Juno and, like, lots of those, like, rich synth sounds. Mm. I think sound a lot warmer in the second record because rather than using, like, a Juno plugin, I'd use, like, a real Juno. And I'm lucky that I had access in the studios I was working with to, like, the real versions of the plugins, like, of these, like, incredible synths. And there's also a bit more like live instruments, like a bit more like live bass and mm. and like violin, like the strings. Um, and like the more the more music I'm making, like the more I'm realizing I'm incorporating more hardware and more live instruments than when I started. And so it's kind of like shifting in almost like an electronic indie direction um mm. which which I enjoy um and yeah obviously the privilege of being able to use such amazing instruments and 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 synths and hardware like in the, the studios that I'm working in yeah because I think there was also like a lot of anxiety when I was younger of like I don't know how to record this technically I don't know how to plug this in and like get the best sound mm. Um, well, yeah, so that's like a learning process as well. I feel a bit more confident with that. Yeah, yeah, all those kind of like nice analog synths are so lush, like live, aren't they? It's it's all like taste as well, isn't it? Like, you know, if you want to whack a distortion on a synth, then it sounds more granular. Like, it, who can tell the difference really apart from proper music gearheads? So, I don't know, yeah. 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 Like the like Beach House, I think it is a profit and it's just like such a specific sound. Certain synth sounds be like, oh yeah, it just wants to block it over him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, definitely. Um I have um you know when you get 
when you discover like a sound either whether that's like it's like a happy mistake or you just discover like a plug-in or an effect that you just love and you can't stop using on it like five separate songs um do you have anything that you're proper buzzing off right now like a particular sound or technique um I mean I'm pretty obsessed with like guitars and live bass at the moment um this is all very new to me because I was always on synths Mm. and so I guess I guess like I'm now creating this music which kind of sounds like you know like the 80s like 4AD era like almost like Cocteau Twins so this is like a whole new world for me of like wavy kind of psychedelic guitars and bass along with like my electronic like drum machines and like thick synths and sad slow words <laughs> um so yeah I'm just kind of like exploring that palette but like every every track I'm, I'm making I'm like let's let's put some guitar in it let's let's add loads of reverb and like um and delay and just make some like yeah I guess like early folds like mm. um a bit more experimental but obviously like your your instrument is guitar so like that's your that's your primary isn't it so yeah it's all new to me <laughs> no it's it's like when you start you know discovering pedals like I remember when I bought like I use this pedal Boss DD6 delay and honestly it's on every it's on everything because it's just got this mad function that overlays the signal over and over again and it's like you know it becomes like a fucking cacophony of like (laughs) and it's just on everything because it's such a great sound so yeah have fun with it honestly like if you want me to recommend some pedals I I know some mad ones like (laughs) um yeah it's such a great thing to do and yeah I I guess like for, for me like working with a producer who was more into synths and like I discovered that working with him and it's such a good like um exchange of like inspiration and like ideas isn't it when you're kind of working with someone yeah yeah I love that because you mentioned using you use garage band earlier to do the your earlier demos but um what what do you work in now what door do you use logic yeah yeah I use logic Joe uses logic um sometimes I work with producers and it varies from like fruity loops to like pro tools to ableton I guess live everything runs through ableton so mm. um but my my md and my bands know how to use ableton live better than I do yeah I actually struggle with some of the tech and I'm, I'm not afraid to like ask for help with yeah. like how do I do this because I'm I do find this thing like people expect you to expect you to like be an expert on every single software and it's like yeah, <laughs> yeah. I have no idea how Ableton works yeah, so, yeah. I, can't, <laughs> I can't I can't get used to it either I tried and I was like no 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 yeah back to logic <laughs> I can't figure it I can't I can't deal with it I wonder how much like when you, when you're producing your music like you mentioned you're kind of in more of a ideas like that like really driving like steering it and listening to the sounds and I wondered how much you kind of mix the music as you go or whether you just kind of like to lay out all the sounds and and produce it but not focus so much on you know padding things or affecting things or do you do that all all as you go all as I go along mm-hmm. and for me that's part of the idea like I'll be panning something for a specific purpose mm. I'm gonna want to have coming in from this direction I want it to feel a bit disorientated and then I want it to come together in the second central for the second chorus or whatever it is yeah um and I work quite quickly I think that it helps working with Joe like because I can be like um right I want you to side chain this and then I want you to take it off at this point and he'll just side do it quickly and so so I can I because he's so quick on it like I can hear those ideas quite quickly and then make decisions yeah um I guess the like the song will be the bulk of the song will be written and produced in one day but then I can agonize for weeks over like the minutiae of the production <laughs> yeah yeah like um 
the bulk of it is like usually written on that day pretty like um yeah instant yeah Mm -hmm. yeah I find that when you when you do like envelop yourself in the in the sounds like so my you know the minutiae of it and then you listen to it like weeks later and you're like yeah it sounds cool <laughs> it's like you spend so many yeah. hours like why and then it's fine I hate that yeah, you're just <laughs> like that yeah um <laughs> yeah and in the, in the same way I, I guess for, for me like I always get I always wonder whether mixing mixing as you go because I, I like to mix as I go as well because it does help me get to the next part of the song and and, and see the whole thing as like a, a thing but um in the same way how how like how much do you like to organize the sessions like you know sending stuff to buses and and grouping things like and do you find that helps you get to the ideas quicker that you like as well or do you you're not bothered yeah. about that yeah 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 as I go along so for example mm. let's say um I'm like tracking the chorus I usually have like I don't really track a lot of my vocals. A lot of my vocals are like a, just like a single, a single voice. Mm. Um, but when I do want that kind of like choir effects, and off, I've been doing that often. I'm like, right, I'm going to track it loads and like add loads of harmonies, and then I'll bust that separately. So I still have like my single voice as the lead mm. that's not doubled. And then, and then I'll bust like the BVs to sound like a choir that's like sitting behind, mm. rather than, rather than like super tracks like double vocals. Yeah. Um, so there's like stuff like that where I'll, where I'll be like, and I know what it is that I want, and so I'll be like, Joe, let let's just like instantly bust it or whatever. Mm. Um, or I'll be like, I want, um, all of the low end to be like super wet and and misty but I want like super clean dry high end like Mm. create like crispy drums but like quite uh like wavy mid-low end so Mm. stuff like that I'll just like yeah yeah I'll call it the ideas help sculpt it along the way and then you know where you are with it yeah 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 Yeah. I'm always like listening to the song as it's like how would I want it to sound like as a finished track like how would I want that I'm I'm almost like predicting yeah mm. thinking about the thing as I'm going along <laughs> yeah 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 definitely um I've become obsessed with um I can't even remember what it's called um it's it's an amazing plugin that my mate Paul's got who I work with sometimes and you know, you know the way Radiohead have those, um, like, it's like an alien choir vo- vocal. Oh, what's the song? Um, you can laugh, but laugh. That one from OK Computer. And there's like a there's yeah. like a weird alien male vocal choir on it. And then and then there's like it like stutters weirdly. But the, yeah, he's got an, he's got a plug in that. Um, creates like all these kind of mad vocal stuttering sounds is it called effect tricks it might be called simply the stutterer or something like that but um i'm obsessed with that at the minute <laughs> but yeah i wondered if, if if there's anything that any kind of plug-in or particular library that you is your go-to for say like drums or you know i, I know we mentioned that since or like bass um that you just like I know yeah. I know it's gonna be that so let's just go straight to that <laughs> I mean I'm pretty basic like reverb like I love Valhalla and like mm. most of the weird most of the synth sounds like most of the weird sounds on the second record are from Omnisphere mm. like loads of sounds there which is quite expensive but like I'd rather have like three plug three quality plugins and like millions of plugins that do little things yeah um yeah I'm not always sat there like searching for the perfect sound mm. um I'm not yeah I'm not that obsessed I just there's like if I want to hear like um yeah I'll just find something that closely matches what the idea of that I have in my head but I'm not like a 
a huge a huge nerd and I I quite like using a lot um like having less options yeah rather than tons of options yeah so so do you like to kind of use the apple samples or is it like a particular sample pack you go to um because I'm just kind of in the process of like do I want to download loads of sample packs or do I just want to keep it I don't know <laughs> simple <laughs> yeah I mean sometimes like I'll just if I can't be asked searching for the right synth I'll just put it all in on like logic sounds mm. but depends what I'm in. like if I'm feeling like I really want to dive into the production as I'm going along which is which is most of the time I'll get up Omnisphere or I'll plug in the synths that I think will have the right sound. Mm. If I can't be asking that, but I'm really keen on writing mm. and or I'm not I'm, or, or I don't have the idea of the production in my head, which is less less often, but like mm. I but I have like a feeling or like a conversation that I want to turn into a tune or something, then I'll just use like logic piano, like logic synths, blah, blah, blah. And like sometimes like there is songs that like have like loads of like logic zone sounds in it yeah yeah i mean like my early work was like everything was just like garage band vibes so yeah 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 so as long as it's yours and like you love it i don't see the issue no it's like it's like the sound like i don't know i've got no snobbery yeah, yeah, absolutely. I don't think you can. I don't think it's allowed in music. <laughs> um, yeah, that's so cool. Getting more into production, like going from being such a like writing a song on a guitar and then recording it and producing it all, like going from that, getting more into the soundscaping and like at the kind of atmosphere of of songs. I wondered, like is there a particular way that you like to work when you're writing? Like, um, cause you mentioned you put a lot of focus on lyrics and you know, they're always your own. And, and I just wondered, does that come first or, or is it all, all things at any point and it all always changes? I say, I usually like sit down at a keyboard first and get mm. some verse chords or chorus chords. And then once I have that, I'll write some, uh, yeah I'll for some reason like a word or a phrase comes into my head when I'm like playing the chords and then I'll sit and then I'll loop them and I'll sit down and I'll write that first verse or that chorus based on that word or that phrase mm. and that's quite quickly um because I just kind of go with it as if it's like an improv like yeah. that's rather than sit down and like agonize over things I just work really quickly and if it's shit it's shit it's almost like a blah, 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 blah. then at the end of the day I listen to what I've got and I'm like oh shit that's what was on your mind oh my god that's so profound like it's like a form of like therapy mm-hmm. but yeah I'd say like yeah the keys then the words and then we'll go back in and usually write the chorus chords and then by that time I've probably already added some drums and we've got kind of like a a vibe yeah <laughs> nice <laughs> this is a big thing for me like knowing when to leave something alone and not throwing loads of stuff at it just to kind of feel like you're finishing it so I wonder like is there a particular moment when you know when it's finished and you're like right it's done done yeah yeah and then I'll leave it for two weeks and then listen back for like a second like just to confirm because I think like time is the best tool that you can use mm. once you've like almost like forgotten the song and you're out of that space that you wrote it to then come back and listen with fresh ears you're immediately like this needs to change or it's done so and then leave it for like another two weeks. yeah <laughs> I'll never continually work on one song like every single day mm. I'll come back to think I think that's something that I need to get to grips with because I will just like, why is it, why does it, why is it right yet? And then it's just time, isn't it? And giving your ears a rest. How do you, um, I, I struggle a lot with them um, when you're working on your own. I don't know, you mentioned this earlier. Um, when you're working on your own and you hit a wall, it's, it's really difficult to get unstuck from that. And I just wondered, do you have any like routines or particular things that you that that get you out of that mood? 
Yeah, so there's like different things. Um, sometimes I'll sit there and I'll just be like, what is it that I want to say? Like, if I had to sum up this song in a sentence, nothing necessarily to do with the lyrics. Like, this sentence doesn't have to be a lyric. Mm. It could be like, you hurt me, but I understand. Mm. Or it could be, I don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. Mm. Do you know what I mean? And then I'm like, and then sometimes I'll write that on a piece of paper and they're just like write things associated with that. Mm. And then, or maybe I'll pick up a different instrument and just like riff around like a top line. And then this is like, if I'm really struggling and then I'll take one of the top lines that I've like come up with and maybe apply that to some of the lyrics that I've written down. If I'm like really stuck on a, Mm. really stuck on the next verse or or doing a middle, for example. And if it's really not working, I just change it. I'll just change the chords. It'll be like, these chords aren't working because it should come quicker than this. Mm. Let me simplify it. Let me make those chords easy. Let's, it doesn't, maybe this doesn't need to be a challenging section. Maybe this just needs to flow nicely. Mm. Maybe I'll just play a minor instead of whatever fucking key change I was trying to do. Yeah, modulation. <laughs> yeah. Um, do you ever get that when you're producing and steering the, the, the sound of the track? Yeah, 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 yeah. And if if in doubt, I strip it back to pretty minimal production, like pretty minimal drums, sorry. Um, I can always, I can always, when I come back to it in, in the next few weeks, I can always change and add what I think is the right thing. Yeah. Yeah, I always want to lead the session with a fully written song where, but the it's the drums that I guess I'd agonise over mm. that kind of would dictate. For me, it's bass. Like, I could sit there for hours and, like, listen to bass sounds and be like, no, I hate that, I hate that, I hate that. Maybe I should just buy a bass. That's probably it, isn't it? <laughs> Such a guitar head. Just buy a bass and just you'll be happy. Um, <laughs> it's weird, isn't it? Um, oh, amazing. I've got some like um, non gear music related questions. Well, I suppose it is music related, this one. If you could collaborate on any type of project with any human being, <laughs> who, who would it be? Um, I'd love to work with Caribou. That transformative thing for me, mm-hmm. that it was like dance music that still had like, interesting lyrics and writing and vocals and guitars and live elements to it but still just like slapped hard in the club Mm. (laughs) like and um and so I'd be interested to pick his brains and also like just yeah work on a project Mm. with him his boss yeah what is uh, it doesn't have to be weird, actually. My question was, what's the weirdest thing you've been inspired by? But it doesn't have to be weird. Like, or is there any particular song um, you've written that you, you just like, that was such a good inspiration for that one? Um, Like the canal near where I live. Is that Le- Gr- Leeds Liverpool Canal? Yeah, 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 yeah. Where yeah. I grew up. And like, also the canal where I live now. Like, I've written a song about that. Like, um, I never really try on purpose, but, like, there always ends up some, like, link with nature or, like, my physical surroundings, whether that's in a metaphor or, like, literally. Mm. There's loads of references to nature. And that's just me. I love being outside. I love hiking, like... Mm. uh, And... I love going for walks like every day with the dog and like connecting to the just like the wildlife around me so of course it's going to wheedle its way into my music (laughs) yeah for sure in my head I just write around about exes but if I actually look at my work it's actually like it's it's more diverse and includes like a lot of things to do with nature (laughs) yeah Yeah. well it's like you know nature's the, the metaphors for all these things yeah do you have any general advice for women who are started to produce their own music? Yeah, I guess from a creative perspective, um, 
less is more. Like, don't drown yourself in millions of plugins. Get to know a few small things incredibly well. And um, if in doubt, strip it back. Start again. Um, yeah, there's always going to be someone that's like an absolute nerd, right? Mm-hmm. But it doesn't necessarily, they have the ideas to be able. Um, and it's about the production choices that you make, not the complexity or mm-hmm. the or the nerdiness. So have confidence in like the sound that you like. Think of everything as like, how do I want that to sound? And is what I'm doing visually making it sound like that? Because often we can produce like just staring at the screen and like yeah. just habits, like applying certain reverbs, applying certain things because that's what we're told to or because that's just like habitually blah, blah, blah. But like actually like listen to what it is that you're applying. Mm. And also like sometimes I'll do something and then you can change your mind. Even if you've agonized EQ and a snare for an hour, you can an hour later be like, that shit, get rid of the whole snare. Like yeah, yeah. just because you've like, just because you've nerded out on something. If it's not working, take it off, change it. Mm. Like see everything like face value, not the work that's gone behind it. Like, yeah. does that sound work? Yeah, listen, look at the wall, bring the bring, like bring the whole project off the screen and listen to it. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. I have I have an issue of like focusing too much on on that sometimes. So that's really good advice for me. <laughs> yeah. Because that's just how it works when you look at a screen and like it's linear. Do you know what I mean? Like we just have to remember to take a step back and remember that the way that this is going to be consumed is through headphones. Like Yeah, or probably. like laptop like, speakers. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. I think you forget a lot of the time that just just because you're on a laptop and it's very technical and it's very like, you know, lots of plugins and sounds that you can use. It's like the way we consume music's very emotional, isn't it? And people aren't people just are not listen they're not listening to that, are they? So yeah, you've just gotta have no. that in mind. Yeah. Neither do they know or care how it's made. Mm, yeah. Oh, amazing. That's been such a great chat. Like feel like yeah dev inspired and thanks for chatting to me that's so lovely yeah yeah it's... honestly like anyway, yeah we have a pint when i'm in liverpool yeah definitely yeah i will give you a shout when i move to <laughs> hackney i'm just gonna be in london fields literally every day pretending to make yeah. music <laughs> but actually just having all the beers and playing ping pong <laughs> yeah that's actually all we do pint yeah fields. pint to the park Oh, amazing! And all the best with like new music and and have you are you doing any gigs? Um, are you touring the album? I'll ever be able to tour the second record now. Yeah. Um. So, cracking on with the next one, and I've got a few festival shows. I'm curating a night at Sound City. Um, <gasps> Yay! Which, amazing. Yeah. So I'll definitely see you there. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, amazing. Have a have a great evening and um thank you so much. Great Great to see you. Bye. <laughs> Thanks so much for listening and don't forget to subscribe and follow to this podcast. I'm Natalie McCool and you can find me and my music on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, and also on my website, nataliemccool.co.uk. Thanks. I think you're a magnet, and I'm a magnet.